Hi guys, this is Dr. Vishal Gopale and welcome to my YouTube channel. First of all, how are you? I know you must be doing great. Now, as you have rightly clicked seeing the title of this video, we are going to discuss about how to give vasopressors and inotropes in patients of shock. We are always worried or haunted by the question that my patient's blood pressure is still falling despite fluids. So when should I start norepinephrine? How much do I have to start? When to add vasopressin to it and where to add epinephrine to it? And we are also worried about the titration, the dose. So if this question haunt you in the ICU, this video will become your go-to guide. Now before starting the main discussion, we must know what is the difference between vasopressor and inotrop. No, they are not the same. See, vasopressors basically squeezes the vessel and increase the BP by vasoconstriction. Whereas inotrop squeezes the heart and that improves the contractility and the, your cardiac output. To simplify your understanding, just think of it like you are washing your car and the pipe is too big. And because of this big pipe, you are not getting good pressure to clean all the car. So what do we do? We just press it and increase the pressure so that you can apply it wherever there is a dirt and you can clean that. That's exactly the role of the vasopressor. So vasopressor acts on the pipe, they compress the pipe and increases the pressure so that blood reaches wherever it wants to be. But if you're talking about the inotropes, they act on the pump. Like for example, if you are washing the car and the motor itself is not working from where the water is coming. So what we do do? We will just give something or we will give electricity to the motor or we will change the wiring of the motor or we will basically support that motor or the pump. That exactly is the role of the inotrop. See, if pressure is low because pump is weak, you have to repair the pump. Now, this is exactly how it works in the ICU. For example, if patient is having septic shock, what will be damaged? The blood vessel, basically blood vessel will become leaky because of the inflammation or because of the persistent hyper responsiveness, which we see in the inflammation. And in these cases, you have to give something to compress this blood vessel. So we give vasopressor like norepinephrine. But your patient is having cardiogenic shock. Now in cardiogenic shock, what is that the problem? The pump itself is at the problem. The heart itself is the problem. And that's why we give inotropes which will act on the heart pump and will cause essential contraction and improve the cardiac output. Now, before discussing about the main inotropes, first let's learn about the receptors where they work. Now, we have to just remember five things over there. Alpha 1 receptors, beta 1, beta 2, V1 that is vasopressin and D1 that is dopamine. Valve. Now, how to remember all these receptors and where they actually work? Now just remember beta 1, 1 comes in it, it acts on the one body that is the vasculature. So because of that, that causes vasoconstriction and mainly norepinephrine works on the alpha 1 receptors. Now coming to the beta 1, so again 1 is there, so it acts on the one organ that is your heart. So it will increase the heart rate, increase the contractility and dobutamine and epinephrine actually works on the beta 1. So they will be your inotrope. Then comes the beta 2 receptors. As the name comes 2 in beta 2, it works on your two lungs and causes bronchodilation. Mainly epinephrine works on this. Then we have V1 that is basically your uh, vessels receptor. Vasopressin act on it causing vasoconstriction and increasing the blood pressure. And this action is independent of the catecholamines. Last is we have D1 where dopamine usually works in the renal dose and this will cause the renal vasodilation. But nowadays this is obsolete in the shock management. Now let's see how to start the proper treatment. But remember, before you start the treatment, there are some ICU rules that you have to know. First, secure a central line. Okay, peripheral line only will work as a bridge. You have to monitor patient's ECG, MAP, that is mean arterial pressure, urine output, and the lactate levels. Now during all this, please remember to not delay initiation of norepinephrine. There are evidences and it has been shown in survival sepsis consensus in 2021 that early nor norepinephrine will improve the survival outcome. Now, remember when you start once, don't be in hurry to stop as well. Wean slowly and after stability occurs. During all this, make sure the target map is more than 65 mm Hg is achieved so that proper renal perfusion and the tissue perfusion occurs. And remember, always treat the underlying causes causing this shock. So it can be sepsis, MI, pulmonary embolism because vasopressors are only for support. Now let's start the drug by drug discussion. So first and most important drug which we always start is norepinephrine famously called as NORAD or noradrenaline. Now this is the first line in septic shock. So how do we prepare this? So we prepare this in the normal saline. We take two amples of noradrenaline, 
2 mg each that becomes 4 mg we put that in the 50 ml syringe that becomes close to 80 microgram per ml and we start with 0.05 microgram per kg per minute for example if person is 70 kg 0.05 into 70 becomes 2.5 ml per hour on the pump maximum we can give up to 1 microgram per kg per minute Okay, so for 70, we can give 70 microgram per kg, uh, 70 microgram per minute. And maximum we can give up to is 1 microgram per kg per minute. Very important, please remember this. Target in all these patients should be MAP more than 65 mmHg. Now, as we already discussed, norepinephrine acts on the vessels and that will constrict the vessel to increase the pressure so that you can clean the dirty car or it can reach to the target organ and improve the perfusion. Now, before going to the next vasopressor, please remember if norepinephrine requirement is increasing from more than 10 to 15 ml per hour, don't just keep increasing. Now, this is the time to add the second agent. More preferably, that agent should be catecholamine sparing drug because if you give norepinephrine more than 10 to 15 ml per hour, there will be tachycardia and tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. So, the drug we prefer in this case is vasopressin, which acts on the non cholinergic or non uh, catecholaminergic receptors it act on the v1 receptor on your blood vessels and for that we have the dose fixed 0.03 units per minute no kilogram or no body weight adjustment is required in this case and for preparation of vasopressin we use two ampules that is 20 units each it becomes 40 units 40 units in 40 ml okay so that becomes one unit per ml so you just have to fix the pump or start at 1.8 ml per hour that gives you 0.03 units per minute now maximum you can give is 0.04 units per minute that is 2.4 ml per hour beyond this if you give there is a ischemia risk okay so we discuss about the norepinephrine now this is something called as vasopressin but remember Norepinephrine can improve the mortality if it started early. Vesopressin does not have any role in the mortality. But remember, it reduces the norepinephrine dose and that reduces the risk of arrhythmia because of the tachycardia. Now coming to the epinephrine. This is the second line or add-on agent. How do we prepare this? So we give 4 mg of epinephrine in 50 ml NS, which again becomes 80 microgram per ml and starting dose is 0.01 microgram per kg per minute. So that becomes 0.5 ml per hour as a starting dose for 70 kg adult. Maximum we can give is 1 microgram per kg per minute. Remember, it is very useful if norepinephrine plus vasopressin is not enough. Also, especially in patients of anaphylaxis it is used and for patients of refractory septic shock. So if I have to give analogy of epinephrine, just imagine that now we are cleaning the car with the two hands and we are just, you know, reducing the pipe size as well as we are improving the motor so the total force of the water coming through or the total tissue perfusion will gradually increase because of epinephrine now let's come to the third agent very important this is one of the best agent for the cardiogenic shock patients and patients who have low ejection fraction and the name is dobutamine Yes, dobutamine is often used if patient is having cardiogenic shock or patient is having low EF. The preparation is we have to give 250 mg in 50 ml. So that becomes 5 mg per ml. And starting dose is 2 microgram per kg per minute. And if I have to convert that into ml per hour for a 70 kg adult, that will become, after doing calculation, 1.7 ml per hour. Okay, on the basis of weight, we have to calculate. But the starting dose is 2 microgram per kg per minute. Don't worry, all these uh, starting doses I will mention in the description. Please make sure you read that too. Now, maximum dose of dobutamine we can give is 20 microgram per kg per minute. So, in a nutshell, if patient is having low cardiac output or patient is post myocardial infarction or if patient is having severe heart failure, then dobutamine will improve the cardiac output. Now, coming to the dobutamine. Dobutamine is largely outdated. It can be given as 400 mg in 50 ml that becomes close to 8 mg per ml and the dose we can start with is from 5 to 20 microgram per kg per minute but remember there is a problem with the dopamine that it is do it has dose dependent effect it has high risk of arrhythmias and increases the mortality in septic shock patient which was found in the soap 2 trial now current role is it is rarely used maybe can be used in bradycardia patients with hypertension without access to norepinephrine then you can use dopamine 
so just to give you an analogy just remember dopamine is like a old unreliable generator which can kick start the motor sometimes so that you can you know clean your car but you know it has no power backup but you already have the modern batteries or modern motor now in the form of dobitamine so prefer that so in a nutshell when to add what or when should we stop so see norepinephrine should be started first once if the patient's map is less than 65 mm per inch we have to titrate norepinephrine every 5 to 10 minutes small increments should be done and remember if norepinephrine requirement is more than 10 to 15 ml per hour you have to add vasopressin and if patient is still hypotensive then you add epinephrine correct and if patient is having cardiogenic component then we add dobutamine as we discussed and if patient is refractory to norepinephrine vasopressin plus epinephrine then we add a very important agent that is hydrocortisone 200 mg per day that will help you for the adrenal in cases of adrenal crisis now the most important part is about the monitoring and the bedside assessment make sure you are maintaining map of more than 65 mm mg urine output of the patient is more than 0.5 ml per kg per hour patient is having adequate lactate clearance and you also have to check dynamic parameters that is first is ivc collapsibility okay make sure that ivc is properly collapsible if ivc is not collapsible that means the patient is having fluid overload okay second pulse pressure variation and third is stroke volume variation now before concluding video let's see some examples so that you can get the clear idea so we have a 45 year old male he came to us with septic shock uh, his map is 50 despite giving 2 liter fluids at the start so what should we do yes we will start with the norepinephrine at 2.5 ml per hour we will escalate it to 12 ml per hour but now because we are requiring lot of norepinephrine we will add vasopressin at the 1.8 ml per hour and still patient's map is only 60 more not more than 65 even lactate are rising then what we will do we will add epinephrine now after adding epinephrine we did the echo meanwhile and the echo was showing injection fraction of only 20% so then what should we do we add dobutamine now and if even after that nothing is working then we will add the hydrocortisone i hope you understood how to manage this patient so in a nutshell i'll just tell you that vasopressor will buy you time but you have to treat the underlying cause make sure you are fueling the tank before starting the motor and you have to go step by step that's it for the complex topic i hope i was able to simplify it for you if you understood well please let me know in the comment section what else topics you would like to learn from me and share this video with all as well as subscribe to our youtube channel for more such content this is dr vishal gawale signing out bye bye and please remember to take care of yourself